Clit. I exhaled sharply as I lowered the revolver from my temple. Today marks the fifth anniversary of Nadia's disappearance. Hard to believe it's been that long. We had so much time left, so much life to live together. But that all came to a screeching halt half a decade ago on the day we found those stairs. Without her, I have no purpose. I've got no family, no friends, no one to keep me tethered to this world. So, every year on the night that Nadia went missing, I stumble out to the spot that it happened with my six-shooter in hand, halfway drowned in a handle of vodka, and I let the forest decide if I'm going to live for another year, or if I'm going to be reunited with her, wherever she is. Now that it's determined that I have at least one more trip around the sun, I'll tell you how I ended up here at rock bottom. I need to get this out while I still have the guts to tell this story. Don't know why though. I'm going to wake up sometime tomorrow afternoon with a massive headache and no recollection of tonight's events. I'd better tell you while I still can. I've lived on the outskirts of Bear Creek National Park for my entire life. Don't bother looking it up. It's a fake name, so nobody tries to seek out the evil that lurks here. It's safer that way. As I was saying, I used to live out here in a cabin with my dad. I miss him so much. He passed away eight years ago, leaving me all alone. Cancer sucks. That was before Nadia and I started dating. It's funny how things work out. I actually met her at a coffee shop on my way back from visiting dad's grave. When she approached me and asked if the seat across from me was taken, I was instantly smitten. Her deep blue eyes shimmered like the ocean. Long brown hair cascaded down to her shoulders in waves. And that smile. When Nadia smiled, it was as if time stopped just for a moment so that the whole world would soak in its breathtaking beauty. We were inseparable after that day. In a month, we were dating. In nine more, we were living together in my cabin. And in another year, we were set to get married. Had a date and a venue picked out and everything. I was on cloud nine. But that was all torn from me in an instant. God, I wish I never would have taken her out there. I had my first experience with the stairs when I was seven. Dad had always warned me never to climb them. That wasn't a problem for me though. The stairs exuded a malevolent presence. Like anyone who dared to walk up their steps would be eaten alive from fear alone. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was playing in the woods near the cabin when I saw it. A black, winding set of metal stairs that stretched maybe a story. They didn't lead anywhere. They just kind of... ended. All the stairs are like that. They vary in size and shape and model. But the one thing they all have in common is that they don't lead anywhere. And they're never in the same place twice. They just sort of materialize. No one knows how or why. And truthfully, we don't want to know. Most of us, that is. Nadia wanted to know. And that knowledge cost her everything. Come on, baby. Just a little further. I want to see the sunset. Nadia whined in protest and my proposal to head back. Nadia, I know you, but we didn't bring flashlights and our phone batteries aren't worth crap. I don't know about you, but I don't feel like smacking into trees every few feet on our way home. Oh, fine, you win. I'll go back this time, but promise me we can come back tomorrow? She requested, puffing out her lower lip and gazing up at me with her best puppy dog eyes. I'd be lying if I said they hadn't worked. All right, I'll take you back out here tomorrow, but only if you... 
Um... I trailed off, entranced by the sight of them. Nadia's brow knitted together in confusion as she traced my gaze. Then, her jaw fell open. Directly before us stood a polished cedarwood staircase. I got a sinking feeling in my gut the moment I laid eyes on that thing. It looked so out of place, like a rat in a fish tank. What is that thing? Nadia muttered, gaze still fixed to it. It's nothing, I'll tell you later, I said, snatching her hand and leading her in the opposite direction. Oh, Jason, let go. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Tell me what's going on or I'm not going to move another inch, Nadia protested, crossing her arms defiantly. I sighed. There was no point in hiding it any longer. She was going to find out eventually. Okay, so this is going to sound completely unhinged, but please bear with me. Ever since I've lived here, ever since anyone's lived here really, people have been finding random staircases in the forest. They appear and disappear all the time, and you'll never find one in the same place twice. The stairs are a bad omen. Something awful happens if you climb to the top, but no one quite knows what. All I know for certain is we need to stay far, far away from them. Nadia rolled her eyes in response. Come on, Jay. Do you really expect me to believe that? A bad omen? Are you some kind of spiritual medium now? Ooh, a staircase. So scary. She said, waving her hands in a mocking gesture. Nadia, do I look like I'm joking? I know it sounds crazy, but I wouldn't lie to you. She softly took my hands into hers and met my gaze. Baby, you know I wouldn't accuse you of that. It's strange, but if it really irks you that much, I won't press it, okay? Thank you. Now, let's go home. I'm starving. Once we were out of sight of that wretched thing, I could sense the tension starting to disperse. It was as if a veil had been lifted. I fell asleep that night with a stomach full of dumplings and not a thought in the world besides the petite girl snuggled in my arms. The stairs had vanished from my brain, just like they always did. Until the next day. We both had the entire day off work, and before I knew it, Nadia was pulling me back down the same path as the day prior to watch the sunset. Butterflies danced in my stomach as we approached the spot that we'd seen the stairs the day before. Even so, Nadia noticed it first. Hey, isn't this the same place you pulled me away from yesterday? Those stairs, they're... gone. See? I told you they were a bad omen. Now do you believe me? I never said I didn't. It's just a strange phenomena, you know. Like seeing a unicorn. You don't really expect to find it. Or in this case, not find it. It's a lot to process. I didn't know what to say. She'd hit the nail on the head with her analysis. Except the staircases were no unicorns. No. There was something far more sinister. We continued our walk in silence until we finally reached our destination. That evening will always stand out in my mind. The sky looked like a painter's canvas. A gorgeous amalgamation of purple and pink and orange melded together behind a smattering of light, wispy clouds. I'd never seen anything so picturesque. We stayed there well past the sunset, staring up into a sea of stars illuminating the night sky. Thank you for keeping your promise. Today was perfect, Nadia yawned, sleepily resting her head on my shoulder. Every day with you is perfect. Thank you for dragging me out of the house. This really has been incredible. I love you so much. You're welcome, Bonehead. I love you too. Nadia giggled quietly, her eyes struggling to stay open. Alright, sweetheart. 
I think it's time for us to go back. You can hardly stay awake. Just a little longer. You're so comfy, she protested, burying her head into my chest. My heart felt so full in that moment. What had I done to deserve such an amazing girl? All right, up we go, I said, hoisting my weary girlfriend into my arms. If your legs won't move, I have no choice but to carry you. Oh no, how terrible. Whatever shall I do? She quit, wrapping her arms around my neck. Nothing. Just stay still and let me... I froze mid-stride. I swallowed a dry lump in my throat as sweat began to bead atop my brow. In the darkness among the foliage, my flashlight beam fell upon a large, bulky object. They were back. Jason, what's wrong? You look pale, Nadia said, following the ray of light until she realized what I was looking at. A wide set of weathered concrete steps ascended to nowhere. They called to me, begging me to climb them. Just one step. Just one. That's all. Jason, I feel it now. What you were talking about yesterday? I feel it. It's all wrong. They shouldn't be here. Nadia whimpered, fear jolting across her pupils. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I said, ripping my gaze from the awful thing. Just don't look at it. We're going to be okay. This time, I wasn't as relieved once we'd escaped the staircase's lowering pull. I'd never seen the stairs two days straight before. They were always more sporadic in their appearance, never showing up with any rhythm or consistency. So to see them twice made me feel a bit uneasy. Nadia and I didn't mention the stairs again that evening. We were both absolutely exhausted and we were itching to get some much needed rest. I'd be damned if I wasn't going to let some stupid staircase ruin a good night's sleep. Nadia was already snoring when I joined her in bed, and I was out the second my head hit the pillow. If only we could have made it until morning. Maybe then, she'd still be here. I awoke in a pitch black room. Nadia was missing from her side of the bed. I didn't worry at first. It wasn't abnormal for her to sneak off to the bathroom in the middle of the night every once in a while. I didn't want to drift back off until I had her beside me though. I waited and waited to no avail. Then, after what felt like an eternity, I finally called out. Hey babe, are you coming back to bed soon? I received no response. That was when the panic set in. Nadia would never ignore me like that. I leapt out of bed and beelined for the bathroom. It was empty. My heart began to pound against my ribcage like a jackhammer. Sirens were blaring in my head, telling me that something was wrong, and I felt helpless to silence them. I turned the whole cabin inside out with no results. Nadia was nowhere to be found. Then, amongst all the chaos, an idea flickered in my head. Why hadn't I thought of it sooner? Nadia's phone was missing from the bedside, but I could track a location and find my friends. I fumbled to unlock my own phone and open the app. I had to know that she was okay. I loaded up the app and located Nadia's icon. She was close. The app said, that she was only a few hundred feet from the cabin. I threw on a pair of shorts and darted out into the frigid night air. I raced barefoot across the leaves and rocks and acorns. I didn't have time to grab shoes. Right then, I didn't care if my feet were torn to ribbons as long as Nadia was okay. I eventually reached the point where a phone should have been. I frantically called it praying that she would pick up this time. I saw something illuminate amongst the leaves. 
and not far beyond it, I found who I was searching for. But instead of being overcome with joy upon finding the love of my life, my blood turned ice cold. Nadia's face was partially illuminated by the moonlight trickling through the canopy. She was gazing down at me with tears streaming down her cheeks. Below her feet sat a staircase. This time, it was ornate. White, glassy marble stairs gleamed, even in the darkness, topped off with a pristine red carpet. The stairs looked as if they would lead straight to heaven itself, and that terrified me. Dread crashed over me like a tidal wave as we stared at each other. I wanted to move. I wanted to sprint up to her and sweep her off those godforsaken things. But I couldn't. I was rooted in place, forced to watch as the girl of my dreams ascended the final step. Jason, please, I don't want to go. I love you and I want to stay with you forever. I had to know. I could feel them calling to me. Please don't let them take me. Nadia sobbed uncontrollably, reaching out a hand toward me. I wanted to grab it, to pull her into my arms, to tell her that everything was going to be okay. But I was stuck. I was forced to watch in abject horror as Nadia involuntarily took that one last step to the top. It felt as if time had slowed to a crawl. One second I was paralyzed, eyes locked to Nadia and those vile stares. And the next, I was alone. Nadia and the staircase had vanished into the cool night air like they'd never existed at all. The burden of that night will stay with me until the day I die. I wailed, I screamed, I pounded the earth until my fists were bloody and my throat was hoarse. Nadia had been taken from me right before my very eyes and I did absolutely nothing. I blame myself for a long time after that. Hell, I still do. I don't think I'll ever be able to move on. That's my punishment, I suppose. Living out a dull, meaningless life while images of my lost girlfriend run through my head day in and day out. It's why I drink. Strangely enough, I've never seen the stairs again. They're really the only reason that I'm still here. Because maybe, if I just give in, maybe if I convince myself to climb that one last looming step, then there might be a chance that I'll be reunited with Nadia. And for me, that's the chance that I have to take. <laughs>